The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMD's Alpha Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can offer clients access to local and international investments. A world where you can engage with clients meaningfully, backed by powerful data and insights with mobile-friendly technology. A world where you can build business efficiencies through scaled managed accounts and bulk reporting. And a world where you can get all the latest news, research and insights to spot the changes that really matter. Wealth is more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. A world of opportunity awaits you at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the XY, no, Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I should have to pay like 20 bucks every time I get that wrong. It's disgraceful. I'm Peter Diamantidis and this week we're going to deep dive into TikTok. And joining me here today is a, well, he's been outsourced in a past working life, which kind of felt good at the time, I'm sure. It's actually started in entry-level client service in financial planning, however, is now a principal of the firm he's with and is a fellow host on the Ensemble podcast. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, James Wrigley. Thanks for <laughs> inviting me on, Peter. Good to have a chat with you. We haven't actually spoken before. We've kind of I know on the internet, but uh, right okay. it, here we go. I feel like that a you know a host interviewing a host. We might break the space time continuum or something by doing this. <laughs> Hopefully, it survives. We'll be exactly, okay. Exactly. Exactly. Now, super keen to pick your brain on all things TikTok, but I did want to take a moment, like we always do, to get you to get to know you a bit better through your use of other technology. So, tell us, what is your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? You must, surely. Yeah, yeah. I saw that in the questions. Like, you know what? What is my most used emoji? I reckon if I go to messages and I try to type on now, what's it going to say? What's it going to come up with? The frequently used is like the the laughing face with the two tears and then the next one's the brain exploding <laughs> and then the next one after that's the celebration kind of popper cracking thing so nice uh, it's that that smiley laughing nice. one the tears but they're all quite descriptive i like it. it i am noticing a little bit of a generational difference when i ask that question um certainly people more in my generation and i'm beating um james without pigeonholing you you are a millennial if i had to guess yep. um and i am firmly in the gen x category and in our our generation thumbs up is really popular right whereas for you guys not so much generally uh, it's not something you do no. so that makes a lot of sense how about, like, you just picked up your smartphone, so clearly it is something that, like all of us, we've got right there next to us. Just to hit, you yeah. had to wipe everything off and you only had to keep three apps. Which three would you keep? My email, mm-hmm. my text, and my phone, even though we're here to talk about TikTok, my phone. <laughs> your yeah. phone. Like so, you actually, actually use a phone for a phone. Really? Wow. They might kick you out of the millennial club there. You'd have That's to be careful. Like a, I'd very rarely answer it. There's always a little notification thing next to the voicemail, and then I have to remember to listen to it. <laughs> so I'm the same. Suddenly go, how are there that many? Oh, I haven't looked for, for a long time. I'm supposed yeah. to listen to those things. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we'll dive into TikTok. I guess I should full disclosure here, folks, um, and being a little bit vulnerable given I am you know, into tech and love tech, I do not currently have a TikTok account. 
All right, mm-hmm. so fessing up here. So there's a good chance that some of these questions will be somewhat more idiotic than they might otherwise be. So I'm hoping, James, you and the listener can be a bit patient um, with me, but I think that's a good way for us to approach this um, sure. is, you know, from uh, absolute beginner to, to to a guru. So when did you first sort of sneak in to check out TikTok? I'm imagining you stalked a bit, did you, for uh, a while? Yeah, so, so I did. Um, so it would have been sort of a kind of halfway through 2023 nearly. Uh, it would have been probably late 2021. I okay. probably opened an account late 2021. Yep. And then, yeah, actually, I can remember being at the FPA conference, which was down here in Melbourne, which was probably October 2021 or probably. something like that. I didn't know, well, how am I supposed to use this TikTok thing? I didn't know what it was. Yeah. A- and uh, I can remember sitting in the audience and I took a video of some performance that was on the, like the closing ceremony thing. And... Uh, and I put some text across it, and I didn't realize I had a spelling mistake in there. And so I put this video out, and it's like, oh, guys, I had three followers. It's not like it went anywhere at that stage, but some guy commented on there saying, yeah, something along the lines of get your spelling right. Uh, so, yeah, probably would have been October, whenever that was, October, November, probably 2021. Yeah, and okay. I fumbled around for a while trying to work out how do I use this thing Yeah. for my financial advice things that I'm talking about on all these other platforms. Okay. I thought I'd try and make that work on TikTok. So it was very much you were already, and I could see that even from your LinkedIn feed, sort of actively putting things out there before that on other platforms. So it wasn't like you were sort of new to content at all. No. Yeah. It was just that this new platform, you know, how do I how do I use it and how do I apply, That's apply it? it? Yeah. So okay. I've been used to LinkedIn in particular mm-hmm. where I you know I'd put my shirt on and I'd make sure my background was nice and, and, I, and I'd sit there and it was all kind of quite serious. I'd be talking about whatever it was that I was talking about, but I felt that because it was on LinkedIn, it had to be that bit more polished and a bit more professional. Mm. Uh, and so then it was, how do I then morph that into TikTok, which at the time was you know people miming and it still is mostly you know dancing to songs and miming and, and all of these kind of things. Right. And, you don't want to see me dancing, nor do you want to see me miming to a song. So well, maybe you might like, get lots of followers, but I'm not sure to get you many clients, right? <laughs> how do I? How do I? You know, this platform that seems like it's exploding from what I see and and, and read, mm. but you know, it's just starting out in Australia, and uh, I'm dealing with financial advice. How do I get that to work? So it took a little bit. Took a bit of time. For yeah. Sure. Okay. And just to give us a sense of that, so you may not know off the top of your head, but on LinkedIn, do you have a sense for how many followers you have on LinkedIn? About 7,000. About 7,000. So that's quite high. I mean, you, you, yeah. you, that's a big figure. You know, you sort of, without going hard on it, somebody might have one to 2,000. Mm. But so clearly that's something you have applied energy yeah, on. I went, yeah, I've been, I went hard on LinkedIn very early on. Yeah. So I kind of got to like 6,000 and then between six and seven has taken forever. Right. And so to compare it then, where yep. are you at on TikTok? Uh, just about to hit 41,000 on TikTok. Okay. And, okay, so let's then talk about the difference between the two as an example um, because it is for, I mean, the work you're doing is to attract clients, assume, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm assuming yeah. you don't want to, like, get on TV or there's other, some other purpose for it that's like, yeah. oh, I'm going to be on it. Yeah. On so, yeah, it did it. Like, whether it was LinkedIn, whether it's TikTok or whatever, yeah, it, it started out as a means to try and attract clients. Okay. And I, I watched a lot of Gary V's yep. listeners might have come across him. I watched a lot of his stuff for for years a little while back, and they kind of had this idea at one stage in my head. It's like, how how do I get people to know that I exist when I'm actually asleep? Like, rather than having to go and talk to this accountant or talk to this mortgage broker or right. you know the the normal things that you would do, the kind of the networking things. Yeah. I have, to, I have to constantly go and see this person and then uh, these people and then I'm saying the same thing over and over and over to all of these different people in the hope that one of them likes me and all of a sudden will will refer their clients to me. Mm. Uh, and then it, like, it clicked. I'm like, I'm watching all of this stuff. There's there's the internet. I can put a video out on the internet and some people will watch it. Yeah. Uh, and, and so that's where it started. Uh, then the, I guess the difference is they're just chalk and cheese. Yeah. The, 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 the two, you know, LinkedIn is... I'd, like, I'd, like, I'd be interested to see that the statistics on that. I suspect there's more older males on LinkedIn. I yep. would just be my guess as the demographics of people just to on there. Just reflect business generally, probably. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Whereas um, TikTok, there's anyone on you know any, every shape and size. Yep. Is uh, is is on there. Yep. And it's much more kind of playful and 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 and, and, and you kind of 
people are more enjoying themselves. People are going there as a bit of an escape, and then okay. so there's me interrupting their escape, talking about superannuation. Don't something. you get too? F- you have too much fun now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did yeah. you? To that end, do you find um, that it is bringing out more sort of um, fun or a looser style of presenting because of the environment it's in? Are you finding you're relaxing yeah. more into that as you do it more? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. and and then it's really interesting to see. So so I like I'll, I'll record one video and I and I now put that in a few different places. Yep. I become a lot more relaxed with my style of videos. Let's just practice. You know, video after video after video after video. The ums and ahs and the ah, oh, I didn't mean to say that word, and just correcting myself in the video and just rolling with it. That's normal. You know, having a conversation yeah. now, we'll we'll each stumble our words from time to time. Yeah. You get used to that. That becomes more real, more personable, and. And then it's interesting to see that if a video does really well on TikTok, and it might be me in my hoodie at night time, I've just cleaned up the dishes and I'm answering some question, I put that same video on LinkedIn. It actually does really well on LinkedIn too, where okay. it, where I thought I had to be sitting there in my shirt and tie, yep. being all professional, but it's really me. The light's not amazing. The sound's not amazing. I've got my hoodie on, and as I said, I've just cleaned the dishes after dinner at night time. Yep. That video does just as well on not to the same extent, but it but it does well relative to others. Now, on Instagram, it does well relative to others on on LinkedIn. So it's almost you can you can almost use it as a testing ground. Yeah, you know, try things there and then it because tends it's to a, work well in other places. So, the thing that um and look, an example of what you're talking about there, where you just sort of correct yourself live, is literally what we you know I just did in the introduction where I messed up right and I said X Y instead of ensemble. And you're right, there's a confidence where you just go, well, that's just what it is and I'm just going to power through. Um, The more you do it, the more relaxed you are. And I think the audience gets more relaxed with you. Yeah. You know? And and it's also what what it took me a long while to realize when I first started putting myself out there on on the internet, some people aren't going to like me and that's okay. Right. And and it's uh, I would much rather that they saw my video and they go, this financial advisor wearing his hoodie, I can't possibly go and see that guy. Forget about it. Great. Yeah. They were never going to like me anyway, so they haven't no. wasted my time. I haven't wasted their time. They've made some decision on me and, and, and move on. Yeah. But what I'm actually finding, it's the reverse. When you're letting people into the real you of yeah. kids running in the background or I'm outside in the backyard and the neighbor next door is cutting their grass or whatever, when you're actually letting people, letting your guard down a little bit, yeah, uh, that they're the ones that really get the cut through and the response that comes back is amazing. Yeah. And look, I um I got wonderful advice some years ago from my speaker coach Andrew Griffiths, who is is wonderful and um a broadly good guy. But he actually pushed me hard on this very topic. So you know, really leaning into who you are and the things you love, and you know all those sort of things. And his view is, if you haven't got somebody who doesn't like it, you're not being enough of yourself. He said it should actually get a visceral reaction. So yeah. not not just being objectionable. Right. Some people do try that. And, you know, and I don't think that's necessarily them being themselves. It's more just be more you, you know, and, and, you know, attract as much as you repel. You know, I yeah. completely believe in that. Yeah. I had, I did some videos. I had a, had a cap on. It was like, it was literally a Saturday afternoon and I was recording a couple of videos at home and I just had a baseball cap on. And someone commented on this saying, God, oh, never go and see you. Can't trust you with a baseball cap on. I'm like, Seriously, it's just that. Like yes. can, look at my 700 other videos that are here, but yep. the one with my baseball cap, you've got a problem. With. Like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you know, take a look at the um, most uh, dishonest and sharky sort of people historically, and they're all wearing very, very yeah. nice suits with <laughs> wonderful hair. And like, <laughs> that's not an indicator at all, guys. You know, your radar's broken yeah. if that's the way you're measuring somebody these days. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think also there's a... There was a conditioning where, you know, polished video, like that full production, you know, the full deal was what we expected because it's the only thing we saw because we're watching TV and it was full production. Whereas now it's the other way. I actually think we all get a bit repelled by full production. I even noticed that a bit with with events for providers when you watch them and they're doing that online thing that's really a well, well, well produced thing and it sort of feels a bit like advertorial, you know. We're all a bit conditioned to like things a bit more relaxed now, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. So I'm really curious because you, it's not like you sort of started in a, you know, entrepreneurial, you know, you had your own business and started doing this. You were doing this while working within a firm, um, yeah. now principal, of course, but, but it is an interesting environment, right? Because some people might think, Oh, I could never do this because I'm, I'm an employed 
advisor, what would you say to them about how they could approach this, you know, say with an employer in a group, what things, you know, can they be aware of or should they, how do they start that discussion? So I guess you've got, you've got two, two options with how you can go about it. There, there's the route that I went down and that might, might not work in every business and then, mm. there's, and then there's another. So, so the, the first route is just, just to do it. Yep. Rather than ask for everybody's permission because the, you know, the size of the business that you're in, the business that I work in is a reasonable size. This person has to say yes, this person has to say yes, this person has to say yes. <laughs> Where the way that I went about it back then was I just started doing it uh, and nothing happened for a long time. So no one really cared. It's yeah. like, okay, great, you're doing these things. Now, ahead of compliance every now and then, we're just like, you know, just make sure, you know, you're not talking about these things. And, you know, there's this ASIC thing, ASIC's just banned this person, just be careful. So you yeah. need to be careful of what you're saying and tread carefully. But from where I started was just an element of I hardly had any followers. There was yeah. no one really watching what I was putting out anyway. No one really cared. I was just doing this thing and, oh, there's James going to record another video. It's it's blown up in the last 12, 18 months or so. Yeah. Uh, to the point now where people are, are saying, oh, well, what are you actually doing there? And maybe can we try and do something similar? And so there's early conversations of trying to do something similar. Yeah. So that's the first option is just don't ask the permission, just, just do it. Start. But you're going to have to get a sense of where you work and is that actually going to fly where you, yeah. where you work or not. Fortunately, my manager, that's still my manager now, has, has just kind of given me enough space to just do my own thing. And, yep. and you know, if it works, great. If it doesn't, that's so also be- great. Yeah. Then, then, then the other option is to ask the permission beforehand. Mm-hmm. But you're going to want to arm yourself if, if you're going down that route. Well, either way, you need to you need to be conscious of it. But you, you need to just be aware of what you can and can't say is, right. is the biggest thing. So the compliance and the licensees and all the rest of it, they're going to be petrified that you're going to be giving advice on these platforms. Yeah. And so the, you know the, there are other financial advisors putting videos out on. On TikTok, and some of them are putting some general advice disclaimer in the comments, or they're overlaying it on their video. And you know, different licensees will have different responsibilities, or yep. different you know different expectations on you for that. Yep. So you might want to understand that first. Yep. But then I find those kind of things start to then you start to start make excuses for not yeah. doing it. It's like oh, I don't have a great phone. I don't have a camera. Oh, my licensee this thing, my licensee that thing. It all gets too hard, and you do nothing. Yeah. I prefer to do it first and then ask for forgiveness later. Look, and the the thing is, so let's imagine you're in a a um, really restrictive environment from a compliance perspective. And some people do work in places where it's just you know, <laughs> um, if everything's watched and monitored, and then you know there are lessons from advisors in the states where there's, I mean, there's a lot of controls around what some of them can say, if anything at all. And they had to get creative. And so they talk about, you know, everything, but, you know, it's, it's all around it and it's, and it's the emotional elements of money. And it's like, there's things you can still engage on, you know? So, you know, if you know who you're talking to and I'm assuming you've, and I can see even on the website, you've like, you've chosen people that you're looking for, you know, a type of client, then they're handling all sorts of stuff. It's not just money. There's lots of things going on in their lives. So, you know, maybe it's about everything else, um, yeah. you know, and surely that's not a problem. Yeah. And, and, and I reckon probably more than half, more than half of you know, the, the attracting the, the, the right clients is just constantly showing up. Yeah. So, that, you know, I think it matters less what you're saying. It obviously matters what you're saying, but I think it matters less what you're saying versus that you're constantly showing up. Yeah. And people, like I even see it now, there's, People that I might have connected with on LinkedIn, someone messaged me the other day. I can look back and I exchanged a message with him something like five years ago, and we had no interaction ever since. But this person's just been sitting in there in the background, must have been watching some of my stuff, and all of a sudden he sent me a message: "Hi, James. You know, we're thinking of retiring next year. I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of your content. Can you help us out?" Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it is a it is a slow burn for for a lot of those uh, connections. Yeah, it is. In- it is interesting, isn't it? And it it um. The consistency thing, I mean, I've even seen it just <laughs> just with the podcast. So this podcast and these episodes. So I guess when we start like second half of last year of 2022, um, we started the Advice Tech episodes. And, and what it meant was there's an episode being released every week. So it means I'm on LinkedIn every week 
right? Now, prior to that, um, there was all sorts of other things taking up my time and I wasn't quite as consistent. And I've seen a significant shift in both engagement and followers and all sorts of things on LinkedIn just because of that people see you and they know they're there and they know what the topic is, you know, so... So, and that happened almost accidentally to me, merely because, you know, Clayton said to me, Peter, we'd love you to host this. And I went, yeah, that sounds great. You know, like it wasn't a, <laughs> it wasn't a LinkedIn strategy for goodness sake. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But you see, you'd start to see that. So I, I agree with you on that. I, I guess I do have a question around, and you sort of mentioned it briefly before almost the repurposing thing. When you started on TikTok, were you doing, were you doing the videos just for TikTok and then you realized you could repurpose them? How did that come about? Yeah. So uh, I, I was so you know, the, so, the, so the TikTok app is great for you get it out. You talk to the you talk to the phone. They, they they make it really easy to kind of stop and start your video, so you kind of have these jumps in it, which keeps people's engagement, keeps them watching for longer. Uh, it, it it's a really simple app to just put the phone in front of your face, record something, and off you go. And and it doesn't need to be polished. It you know uh, it works really well on there. So initially, I was doing that. The, the problem then is I've said something to TikTok, but if I try and save that TikTok video, they put a watermark on it. Okay. And there's ways around it, but it's just annoying to try and get it without the without the watermark on it. Uh, and I'm sure there's metadata in there that if you then put it on LinkedIn, LinkedIn's saying, oh, no, this Ooh. actually video that's been yeah. scraped from TikTok and we're yeah. going to push it down the rankings and all the rest of it. Then actually reached out to, to Ben Nash because he'd um, – no, uh, jumped onto TikTok after I did, and and was and was doing really well. And he started putting out some videos that had these really uh, um, clear captions on there. I was like, yeah, hey, you're doing that because I'd done captions on videos in the past, uh, and it was all this messing around to do it. And he said, oh, I was just the captions app on your know, iPhone. So anyway, I got the captions app. That then means I'm recording the video in the captions app, which is not in any of the other platforms. Okay. And then I can just that one video it's got the captions, got everything on it. And then I could put it in different places. And now it's a, you know, TikTok is a portrait. Yeah, you know, that's portrait style video yep. that, you, that you're putting up. Because of the because of the success that TikTok was having, uh, Instagram's gone more of that portrait style. They call them reels yep. video. Uh, and so that 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 uh, that app is really receptive to those types of videos. So then you can put it on there. As I said, put it on LinkedIn. You know, more more people use LinkedIn on a mobile device than they do on a desktop. Yep. So the so the sixteen by nine works uh, there anyway. Portrait, portrait video works really well there. Yeah. As uh, yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. And have you taken a look at or or considered um, YouTube Shorts? Have you gone that far? Because it's a similar. Yeah. Right. I it's have. their equivalent, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> YouTube Shorts is is similar. The 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 problem the problems. Yeah. Probably the right word. Uh, at the moment, for me anyway, is that. The, the shorts need to be quite short. Okay. Last time I looked at it, they needed to be 90 seconds or something like that. Yeah. And so the tool that they have is the YouTube tool is quite cool. You can upload it and you can cut your video down. But I'm trying to get something that I've just I've just cut down to try and get into three minutes. Now I'm trying to get that into 90 seconds. Right. And not many of my videos are that short. Yeah. You know, to, to then put it onto there as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it is a... I mean, some of the stuff I'm seeing on short is actually more like people doing it to, to somebody else's video almost, like it's them taking a, a snippet out of something, you know, as a way to sort of highlight a, you know, an interview somebody did or something like that. So, yep. yeah, okay. So it's, it's um, but I like the idea of, all right, I'm going to do this once um, and then, you know, I'll, I'll post it accordingly. Have you given yourself a schedule or a day of the week or is there any way that you're doing so it's not something that's lurking all the time you feel like you've got to do uh no there isn't <laughs> the the, the for, for the success on tiktok it is something you need to do all the time yeah okay not a i just post one video a week that's it's not going to get it done anywhere. like tiktok is and it's easy to do it sounds crazy what i'm about to say but it is easy to do it it's more of a three or four times a day okay thing that you need to be trying to do Yep, but but again, they've built the app in such a way that 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 is really easy to do. So you might do one original piece, and what what I've what I did to get into the habit of having ideas was if I'd explain something to a client in a meeting, I'd make a note of it at the end of the meeting, and then I'd just do a video on it afterwards. Okay. Or if I'm like I'm in the office today recording this with you, uh, yesterday I was in yesterday, and I'd just done something on the whiteboard for a client. We're talking about contributions here and pensions there, and I just explained something on the whiteboard and. 
I take a photo of the whiteboard for my file notes, but then also before I wiped off the, the board, I just got out my phone and said, oh, I've just had this client come in and we've done this thing and that thing and turned the camera around. And so that made a three-minute video that's got, I don't know, six or 7,000 views since I recorded it yesterday. Yeah. But back to what I was saying is that TikTok makes it really easy. Then, then people comment on there and you can easily respond to that comment with a video. You okay. can't click a button, the, the comment appears up in the corner and you respond back to it. Yeah. So it's not like you're having to come up with three or four unique ideas every day. Yeah, okay. You know, you've done one, and, and I'm, I put one unique idea up every every few days. Yep. And then in between, you're just responding back to the questions that you get. Yeah, okay. And so in that sense, it's far more of a conversation yeah. than people might think it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, which makes a lot of sense. And to be honest, that's probably what's more appealing to people anyway. Yeah, and someone I heard this probably in a Gary V video from from years ago, and again something that that always stuck with me. He's like, you don't. Someone invites you along to do a presentation, like there's you know there's the ensemble PD Kate day coming up. People aren't going to come up on stage and talk about their thing. Someone's going to ask them a question, and they're not going to respond, or they're going to walk away. But <laughs> that's effectively what you're doing on your social media. Yeah, if you put up a video and someone asks you a question, and you don't engage or you don't respond to that. You've done exactly the same thing as if you're up on stage in front of someone and someone in the audience has asked you a question. Yeah. So I try to respond back to as many of them, many of the, the questions as I can. And look, okay. it might just be a written response, it might be a video, but you want to try and respond to as many as you can. So as you said, it's this conversation that's, yeah. that's going on. Yeah, okay. People will then keep coming back, they'll keep coming back, they'll keep coming back. Okay. And do you think um – I'm curious about the the next step. So are you making, you know, a concerted effort with some sort of call to action or anything like that to get them off the platform, you know, or is it just relying on them trying to find out who you are and where you are? Like how do you take get them to take that next step? Yeah, so yeah, on, on TikTok there's, and then Instagram's copied this feature, you can pin a video at the mm-hmm. top of your, like, feed. Uh, so I've now done, and I've only recently done this, I've got a Hi, I'm James video. Right. I've got a this is who I work with video. Yep. Uh, and this is what the financial advice process looks like. Those okay. three videos are just pinned at the top one after another. Yeah. And then I very rarely in the individual videos that I'm putting up do I say, you know, call me if you've got any questions, that kind of thing. But on the on my profile, there's a couple of words of, of who I work with and then there's a Calendly booking link and people can book a 15-minute phone call uh, the few other financial advisors that are doing TikTok have now got that, uh, are all doing that same kind of thing. Yeah. And that they, they don't even, le- it doesn't even leave the app. So they go to my my profile, they click on the Calendly link, it brings up an ordinary Calendly booking thing. Okay. We have that going, rather than going to my personal calendar, we have that going to a generic contact us one. Yep. Uh, and then either me or someone else who is available at the particular time that someone scheduled the call for. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll talk to them and go from there. But there are lots of people that then just go and search me somewhere else. So they're okay. just kind of fact checking, back checking. Yeah, I'll Google my name. See so that people searching James Wrigley is like the second highest reason why people land on the first financial website. It has been for the last year. Okay, and that's by and large people coming from TikTok that are then trying to see is this guy actually real and where yeah. does it work and is it a legitimate business, not a scam. Yeah. Yeah, and so then in a roundabout way, they'll make leave an inquiry through the website sometimes too. Okay, and do you have a sense for the volume of queries that come through? Uh, it's huge. Okay, so it is. So because I think that's what yeah, you know, and I can hear the advisors' thoughts out there as they're listening. Yeah, like, that's great. You've got this many followers, but do they ever do anything right? So, yeah. so, so, so we're at a, and and it's all to do with the consistency of the videos. So yes. if I'm if I've been busy with work, haven't done a whole lot of videos. They'll drop off. Yep. And there's a lag. You kind of got to build the momentum back up again, and then they start to book in. But you know, I keep fairly consistent with my videos. We'll get a, a dozen inquiries a week. Okay. Uh, coming through, which is heaps. Uh, which is heaps. So, so uh, you know, I do some of the. I do respond to some of the inquiries. There's you know three or four others that, that do do it here as well. That's the uh, part of the benefit of being in such a big business. There's a lot yeah. of other advisors that can help with the inquiries that come through too. And do you think? I mean, the, one of the things that can happen is is people 
really just, you know, I mean, tire kickers is an awful expression. I don't think that's valid. It's that they have a question that's important to them, but it's sort of a, a, a one and done question. Yeah. How are you finding that? Are you finding that people do need advice that you yeah, then- Yeah, uh, there are, yeah, lot, lots and lot. The, the vast majority of them need advice. Okay. They want to pay for advice. And, awesome. Uh, they've drawn the conclusion that we're the people that can help them because yeah. of the videos that have come up. But a- again, this is something that I've learned over time is I need to be careful about what I'm talking about. So as much as I only want to work with a certain type of clients, there's kind of two main demographics of clients that, that I want to work with. If I stray too far from talking about those types of clients and their problems and the things that we're doing for them, then you get all of these other people that are that are booking in. And, right. and so, so part of the reason why I do, you know, there's a, there's a business development element to it, but then there's also just a financial education piece. I get a lot yes. of satisfaction from the financial education piece. So I need to be careful of, I, I put in a few of the, you know, these are really helpful videos, but they're not the ideal type of client that I really want to be working with and is going to pay the fees that make it worthwhile to operate a business. Right. Uh, and so you need to get that that balance right. Yeah. But the TikTok algorithm, call it the algorithm, whatever it is, whatever behind the scenes, it does an incredible job of putting the video in front of the right person that 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 has that complexity or that problem in their life. Yeah. It's scary to think the information that they must have on on all of the users on TikTok if they can kind of pinpoint it in. Yeah. But the number of people that you that that. You know that you that you talk to and say, oh yeah, I've seen your videos and you know, you're exactly you're talking about exactly the problems that we have and somehow out of the 26 million or eight million people that are in Australia, or whatever, it's managed to put that video right in front of you. So yeah, yeah, a lot about you. Well, and it's a bit of magic, isn't it? But I do, I do think you know you, what you're describing there also is um, we have to be careful that we're not doing content just because it interests us. As opposed to attracting the audience we want, and and if you do want to do that, have an entirely different podcast that talks about movies or whatever the hell the thing is that you want to talk about. But you know, be focused on who you're trying to attract. Because I agree with you, it um, it you'll get what you what you ask for, yeah. and that's the challenge. Is is you could be resonating with with you know fifteen year olds who who want to save save extra money out of their chores. Who knows, right? So. <laughs> I did a few, you know, with the the, the hex indexing that that's coming up I, uh, on on the first of June. I've done a few, I've done a few videos on that, and and those videos do really well in terms of the the vanity metrics yeah. on, on TikTok because of the you know it's a large part of the demographic that's on there, but they're not terribly great financial planning clients for the type of work that I'm trying to do. They might be suitable for someone else, but not not so much for me. Yeah. So yeah, you got to get that balance right. And so I am curious. So the the assumption by most, and certainly any of the data I looked at, was that TikTok is somewhat f- well the world of of millennials and Gen Gen Z. So that's certainly a, a well they're on it first. To be fair, so that's that's yep. the, you know young young younger folk. Gee, I sound like I'm like four hundred years old. Uh, <laughs> we're on it first. However, you your target market is some of that, but is also um, people that are a bit older older than that. Are you finding they're on TikTok too? Ah, uh, yeah, it, everyone is on TikTok. There yeah, is okay. no there is no age barrier. Okay. Whilst you were, were talking, I I kind of brought up my my you can see that like the insights of the followers of of you know kind of where they are and and so forth. So as I said, I got forty thousand or so followers, 30% of them are between 35, 25 and 35, mm-hmm. 28 are between 35 and 44, uh, 21 are between 45 and 55. So okay. what's that? 60, 80, 80% of my followers are between 25 and 55. Okay. 14% of them are over the age of 55. Wow. Um, so they are there. Like, you know, I'll yeah. put up a video about the age pension or healthcare cards or something like that. And the comments end up being full of these people that that I didn't think were on there. The, the yeah. other question that I get a lot of is, are there actually people with any money on TikTok? That, <laughs> you know that that kind of thing. Yeah, and and absolutely there yeah. are. Like I, you know, I'll put up videos about are oh, people working in tech on their big incomes and their stock their stock that they get vesting, and then all of a sudden you get someone that calls from Amazon and they're earning seven hundred thousand dollars a year, or yeah. you know that the 
the wealthiest person that I've had reach out, not that advice went anywhere, but the wealthiest person that I had reach out had this phone call and he said, uh, he said, oh, yeah, I've got a, I've, I've done well in my business and I've got a few assets. I said, oh, yeah, tell me what's going on. And he just started talking. I'm like, when is this guy going to stop? And I think at the end, it was, the number was so high, I couldn't add it up in my head. I had to yeah. tally it up afterwards. So, yeah, yes, all ages are on there and all, as I said, all shapes and sizes are on there. Um, yeah. It's really just trying to talk to the people that you want to want to work with. Yeah, and yet, look, you sort of got me thinking because um, one of the places that I want to start focusing a lot more on is on my generation. So, you know, Gen X, which is sort of the forgotten generation, to be fair. It's talking about baby boomers, talking about millennials, and then there's some of us in the middle and we yeah. quietly get things done, you know. Um, and the – the assumption is, oh no, 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 you wouldn't be, you wouldn't want to be on TikTok because they're not there. But the other thing is, you know, you can be a louder voice because you know you're one of the few that are targeting those people on those platforms. So that's an, an, another thing that I guess I'm just cogitating through now is, is do you want to be one of thousands that are talking to those people on a platform, or what if you're one of the few that is, and then all of them want to want to follow you? You know, so there's. There's probably we need, probably need to just let go of those assumptions, right? We probably oh, yeah. just need to go just start talking. Like this is just start interacting and communicating. It it is. It, it's just do it, and it's it's kind of what is Seth Godin's uses this idea of the, the smallest viable market to you 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 want to kind of be as narrow as you possibly can. And if you work with forty five year old females that are lawyers, and and that's who you work with, uh, if you, if you you know talk enough about them, you'll you'll attract those types of those types of people, and I can yeah. guarantee you, they're on TikTok as well. And the algorithm will do a good enough job of putting your video in front of them. Yeah, uh, if you if you talk enough to that type of person. So, in terms of who you think, because presumably um, you're quietly watching what others are doing, um, and you you mentioned Ben Nash, but there'll be others too, and globally talking about financial services on TikTok. Are there any that you think, you know, do? Uh, there probably are people who do it really well, but are there any where you think, wow? that's just not going to work and it didn't, whether somebody's tried something and it's like, that's just not how you behave on this platform. So um, you need to the, you need to get to your point fast right? on there. And, and so there, there, are, there are a few other financial advisors that are, that are trying it and they, they try to keep their punchline back here. I'm talking, 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 and the punchline of what I'm actually trying to say is back over here. Okay. But on TikTok, someone's already flicked off by the time you get to that punchline. <laughs> yeah. And and so there's a few tricks that you need to try and do to get the point across of what you're trying to say right at the very beginning because yeah. most people sit on this thing called the For You page and they just flick, 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 flick. And if, and if your video doesn't catch them in that first one or two seconds, if they can't understand what you're going to be talking about, you want to go on. So okay. it's, fair, it, it, it's okay to have this long video, but you need to hook them at the start with it so you know there are others that i've seen and they're not necessarily just financial advisors but others where they're trying to use it for mortgage broking or whatever else yep. that they're doing and it, it, there's nothing there to hook them at the start so yeah okay you now they have tiktok have this thing where you can put a an overlay on the video so if you're looking at it on my on my page and you see all of the videos in one go it'll give you an idea of what the video is about but that, but that only shows up if you're on my page. If if you're just right. scrolling through the for what's called the for you page, that that overlay, like a thumbnail kind of thing, doesn't appear. Okay. So if you're just relying on that, no one's going to know. Yeah. So you know some of the things that I picked up was you want to put some text on the screen about okay, what what am I actually talking about? So someone can, in half a second, see what I'm going to talk about, and if that's of interest to them, they'll stick around and watch the video. If not, they'll they'll move on. Yeah. And then the other bit is about, and this this applies for videos that you'd put anywhere, is um, making sure you've got the captions on the video because yep. most people, I think, tend to watch the videos, either the volume really low or the volume off altogether. Right. Because very few people are actually sitting there with the volume up loud. and um, Because we're dual absorbing too. I mean, I do it all the time. We'll have the TV on and something's on and my husband's watching the footy or whatever and I'm I'm scro scrolling, you know, and of yep. course I've got the – the sound off then, <laughs> so so you know we all, all do need to adjust to that. I had um I had a mate talking about it and and the exp and this is generational, so I do apologise. But the um the analogy he gave to how we need to approach these vi videos is we need to we need to do them like 
Cliffhanger did. Cliffhanger was one of the first movies ever that was an action film where they had the action as the first thing that happened in the movie. Yeah. Prior to that, there was always the slow burn and it built up and then there was the big thing. Whereas <laughs> Cliffhanger was like, oh, my goodness, right at the beginning, hooked us in and then you couldn't look away. And he said, that's what we've got to be doing. You know, it needs the yeah. Cliffhanger up front. Yeah, that's it. So when, you, you know, when, you, when you're talking to your particular type of client, you know, you're a 45-year-old you know, female lawyer. You want to get that like right at the start. Yeah. The guy, hang on, this, that's me. Oh, yeah, I'll listen to what this guy's got to say. Yeah. Whereas if you leave that right to the end, they, they're not there anymore to see it at the end. Yeah. And that's probably true of, you know, what with any of our writing or even you might be doing a LinkedIn newsletter or any of those things, we probably need a bit more, need to be a bit more respectful of people's time in that sense. You know, yeah. not many people have time to sit down to really absorb and, and just go, you know what, I'm, I am going to sit through this long thing knowing that you'll get there eventually. <laughs> Most of us are just trained for it to be shorter, right? And we're trained to need that hook. So, you know, we probably – and and I mean, maybe we're one of the worst – oh, maybe law's worse, but, but where we do pontificate, don't we? I mean, all of our documents include pontification <laughs> – it's just yep, torturing absolutely. our clients. So, yeah. yeah, okay. So, that's fair. So, let's talk, um, yeah, there anything about, I don't know, the way you've set it up from a two-factor perspective? Like, has anybody ever tried to hack your account, you know, or anything like that or create a copy or that sort of stuff? Yeah, yeah, tons. So, okay. So, um, my, account get, my account gets copied regularly. Yep. Out on, on TikTok, they... Any variation, so I think my name on there is James Wrigley, or I, know, it's, I am James Wrigley, but then when you look at my page, it just says James Wrigley. So all of these variations of, you know, you can look at words and if you know you get the the the, the letter at the start and the letter at the end, and your brain kind of already knows what it is. Yeah. So any variation of starts with J and ends with Y and has a W somewhere in the middle. Yep. They've just they just come up with these pages all the time. So I actually have to go and search my own name on TikTok and go in and block and ban these um these accounts. Okay. So it was, and I've had to stop uh, people being able to save my videos because people were saving them and making duplicate accounts where they'd, Using them. they'd grab 30 or 40 of my videos, make a brand new account, and then go out and, and connect with all of my followers and, and send them messages. Yeah. Text me on this WhatsApp number, that kind of thing. So, oh. yeah, that is, that is all over TikTok. That's the okay. scary bit. Yeah. Whereas that hasn't happened to me on any other platform, it's only happened on there. Yeah. So then every now and then I just I I put up a video and say you know beware guys and you can do this this green screen thing. So I take a screen grab of all of these fake accounts and it's behind me whilst I'm talking, saying you know be careful. You know I'm not going to go on here saying text me on this WhatsApp number if you really want to talk to me. There's a link in my profile and and I'll you know I'll, I'll call you from from the booking that you make from there. Yeah. Okay. And look, it's something we've just all got to be ready for you know it's, it's happened to us on facebook it's happened you know on, on all of these things i think it's we've just got to like you say be aware of ways that we can a protect ourselves but also protect the public yeah. you know and and that i mean that's a bigger and bigger concern isn't it these days is that somebody um not just that they might pretend to be you but also will lead somebody astray while they're pretending to be you you know that's the last thing you want yeah and like you know it in a roundabout way, talking about money and finances, and that's you know that's where the scammers want to be to try and rip some money off you. So you we're already talking about things that are that that the scammers are going to love, and then if they can take the, the you know the relationship that you've built with these people online and, and try and rip them off, it's um yeah it's not great for the brand and all the rest of it. Who would be looking after these people? Exactly. Now I'm curious. So so clearly this is you know part of the attraction funnel, and and that's what it's doing. Are you using it in any way for current clients? Like, is there any way you're using the content or that you've found current clients commenting on the fact that they've seen you online? Yeah, yeah. So, it's it's attracting clients that are then continuing to watch my videos anyway once they actually become clients. And so, yeah. that, that works really well. Um, we've used some of my videos as ideas for building um, blog posts for our business website and that go into the newsletter. So, it's, you can kind of can say, oh, this, you know, this video did really well. People must be really interested in this particular topic. Okay, right. well, that's an idea that we'll do for the – and so then the, the content writers that do the blogs for our website, they're always looking at my TikTok and seeing what's working and what's not, using that as ideas. Then they'll write something and then and every now and then they'll they'll embed my video in that in that as well. So yeah, okay. it is being used in other means, yeah. 
Yeah, and I think that's one of the things I'm, and, and I know I'm bad at it, but I think in the industry generally we are, is is not taking full advantage of every piece of content you're creating, like really not utilizing yeah. it, repurposing it, turning it into something else. A blog gets turned into a video, gets turned into it, you know, like we just don't do that enough, which it's is that, crazy. And it, and it takes a lot of time, unless you're paying someone to do it. Mm. It takes an extraordinary amount of time. Like I, like I do my own videos and posting and editing those, most of the time I'm doing that whilst I'm like I'm on the train commuting some you know, somewhere home. I'll I'll record a video during the day, I'll save it in the drafts there and then edit it and stuff on on right. the way home. But but then if you, you know, if you're running your own business and then you're trying to write your own content for your website and reposit like that's gonna take you days and days and days yeah. to be a, a content generator. Yes. Let alone a financial advisor at the same time. Yeah. And I guess that's um I mean you and I were talking off air before we started well before we press record about um you know banking some of these episodes we do for the ensemble podcast and it's it's about you know sort of knowing that you've got some such that our our wonderful producer Kieran can then be releasing them appropriately every week and I guess you know is there any element of you doing that where you're like you've got a thought you do a video and it just goes into your bank of things and you'll get to that editing and then you'll release it over time. So is there a is it is there a narrow gap between when you've recorded and when it, it goes live on TikTok or, on or TikTok, you're finding yeah, you banked them up? In, yeah. So TikTok it's almost instantly. What what I was doing on LinkedIn years ago was it was a bit more scheduled. I I think I was putting out a video on say a Tuesday and a Thursday or something like that. And yep. so and and those videos because the tools didn't exist to make it really easy to edit and do the captions and all the rest of it back then, it, it was it was a fair bit of work. I'd have to record it. I'd have to export that to my computer. I'd have to do this thing. I'd have to do that thing. It, it was a whole process. Yeah. And so in, in that environment, I would record a whole lot of ideas. Then over a period of a couple of weeks, I would do the editing that I needed to do and then just release them slowly. Mm-hmm. But because the tools... And now so good on your phone, it's almost instantaneous. Okay. Where I've I, I've done it, I've thought of it before. Where then I'll, I'll record this video and I'll post on today, and then I'll post on tomorrow. And every now and then I do it. But now because it's all just so fast, between me recording a video, it might take me three minutes to do a few touch ups at the end, and then it's ready to go and post it. Okay, I just post it once I've done. I just put it out. Just and get so that it might up. mean on one day I put out three videos, and then the next day I'll do nothing. Yeah. Oh well, it doesn't matter I, you know, yeah. in, in, I don't think in the in the TikTok universe it matters that much okay and and I guess that's probably uh, interesting insight for people because certainly the feedback you get about LinkedIn is that very much matters so the timing of when the post goes up and therefore when people respond whereas it sounds like the algorithm for TikTok which you would expect is different you know it because is, they yeah. don't it's not business related it's not for certain hours of the day you know yeah. so you can get on the on the creator side of the, of the app they can give you some history of when people are actually watching your videos and you right. get this timeline and and you get I get this peak at about 7 a.m. You know, people are watching whilst they're having their breakfast or something and then it dies down through the work day and then it really ramps up towards 9 p.m. Yep. And then after 9 p.m. it falls off a cliff, everyone goes to bed. Yep. And so I have found that if I post in those hours between about 7 and 9, there's a large proportion of my followers are online yep. and those videos – if, if the video is half decent, tend to do really well if you're, yep. if you're playing that game, getting it in that window. But outside of that, I found it doesn't really matter that much. And they actually have they actually have quite a long lifespan. Okay. Content on LinkedIn, unless it does exceptionally well, is dead within a couple of days. Yep. No one looking at it. It's, it's, it's well down, even though there's not that much content being posted on LinkedIn. No. It, it just, they just don't keep that post live. Yeah. Whereas... Some of my videos, you know, I'll have posted them. Might have been six months ago, and for some reason, it's just appeared in someone's feed. It, okay. and it just keeps just keeps coming up. Okay. So the, the life expectancy of a of a TikTok video is a whole lot longer, which gets back to I don't think it matters that much when yeah. you're really posting it. Yeah. Okay. Well, and that's good because that that can take a, away one of the many things we overthink when we're doing these things. Mm. Is on when should I've posted and you know all that sort of stuff. So if you can sort of get that out of your head and just start doing it, um, then that sounds to me like a good plan. Is there any any plans you have or that you know to progress beyond what you're doing now down the track? You know, is there any ways you plan on taking it further? Uh, I mean, I'm really enjoying making the the, the content. So it's more about 
It's more about rather than taking that further, it's more about evolution of what I'm actually doing from a, from a day job perspective. Yep. So, like, I'm you know, also a host of one of the ensemble podcasts, which if I wasn't doing these videos, that opportunity would have never come up. You yeah. Know, that, that wouldn't have happened. Yeah. So, so different opportunities for different things do start to present themselves. Yeah. As it from a business development perspective, it's working so well that that's then giving me other opportunities within the business here. So, yep. it's, um, I've, I've, as a result of that, I've built a much bigger team of people around me. You know, I'm, I'm in charge of a team of... Uh, 11 or 12 people now, whereas a few years ago it was just me and then I had an associate advisor and all of a sudden it's this massive team, Yeah, um, which really wouldn't have happened if I wasn't doing this. So yeah. it's not so much a, a change in, in doing that. It's more about how can I how can I adjust what I'm doing in my day job to ultimately probably do more of that, whether yes. it's have, you know, have our own podcast here, do more of these videos, try and train others on it and do a bit of a have a bit of a training academy in-house to try and get more people doing this kind of thing, that's probably the changes that are more likely over the next 12 or 18 months, I think. Yeah. And look, it's it's, – all of us need to go through these sort of adventures to find the thing that really resonates and lights lights us up, and it can take a long time to find those, you know. If you went back and asked the year 10 me at high school to say you're going to (laughs) be doing a podcast and putting these videos out and – and like you know, Clayton and Emily have, have asked me along to be one of the um one of the host people for the PD day in a yes. couple of times. Like I'm I'm going to be standing on a stage. Well, that's just crazy. <laughs> that sounds absolutely crazy to me. But you know, year ten of high school, me would have said, no way, you you can't possibly do that. But as you said, you know, try and try and try and you find stuff that you really enjoy, and I'm I'm loving it. Absolutely, and. It, the the thing that's different these days than it was years ago is years ago only people with a certain style training and background ended up being those speakers or ended up being you know like it was very it was almost like the um the sort of newsreader approach if you didn't look like a newsreader you know or have that style you were never going to you know become one of those people that's just not the case anymore no. every voice is welcomed and encouraged and so that does mean if that if you enjoy it, um, it's just finding the audience that loves your voice, you know, so who who resonates with it. And you don't have to be the most gregarious or the loudest or the funniest or any of those things. Yeah. It's just got to be you and the you that resonates with them. Yep. Um, yep. For sure. Have we missed anything you feel we, you need to I don't share? think so. I don't no. think so. There was okay. some of the, the, the tips I actually using the platform itself with the the captions and make sure you've got a bit on there to kind of grab the person's attention or at least tell them what you're going to be talking about in that in that video. No, all good. No, I think that's probably it, yeah. Look, and, and clearly we should all go and check you out. Um, <laughs> that's the first thing I'm going to do. Give us another follow. TikTok. Exactly, is um, my little one to add to, to all <laughs> the others. But, uh, folks, if you'd like to find out more about James, then his LinkedIn, LinkedIn profile will be in the show notes. But, of course, you can just listen to episodes of the Ensemble podcast too. Um, he'll be appearing back in his world um, on his – now, what day are you, James, on Fridays? What day are you? Thursday is mine. Thursday. Go out. Oh, right. So we're, we're, we're podcast buddies. It's all good. So thank you so much for joining us, James, and just sharing all of these insights. I'm personally very grateful, and I'm sure lots of people out there will have got huge value. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for having me. So do you use TikTok from a professional perspective? Um, to attract leads or to, you know, to uh, potentially uh, get new clients or get a bigger audience. Um, I'm betting probably not. Most people, most financial advisors or, or people working in financial advice aren't, as I understand it. There's a few standouts like James and Ben, but but there's lots that aren't on there. So I'm curious, you know, what, what that conversation prompted, um, what you think about heading onto TikTok. I'd love you to share your insights on the Ensemble platform um, and, you know, maybe any further questions you have or curiosity you have about using TikTok. Um, as for my thoughts, you know, there's a, there's a couple of things um, that really stood out for me there. One is, is we've really got to stop assuming which members of the public are aware and can they afford advice or not? Or, and is that generation on this platform or not? You know, and I mean, I did some digging before um, the interview looking at the proportion of 
TikTok users and what generation they're on. And, and, you know, sure, there's a lot of, um, young people on there, but, uh, like James said, you know, there are Gen X, you know, and, and, you know, there will be even some baby boomers on there, right? Now, the interesting thing about all of this is, um, you know, Gen X, for example, are the next big generation that are going to be approaching retirement in the next 10 to 15 years. So, you know, there's real opportunity here. Um, and I think we've just all got to get out of our heads and our assumptions of, of where people are playing. Um, and I put myself firmly in that too, uh, because I had made the assumption that it probably wasn't, uh, for my audience. So, I really think that's important. But to James's point, you know, who are we trying to attract, narrowing that down and just talking to them, you know, being that voice for them, uh, I think is really important. And then, you know, aside from that, uh, you know, we, we just got to try these things out and give them a whirl. Um, and, and start even at the very least stalking, you know, just get on there and start looking at what people do and and check out the way they do it. Um, you don't have to do the same though. And I think that's the other thing that I think is interesting if you sort of line up James and I right next to each other in terms of style and approach and, you know, I'm, you know, here's me you know, give me a mic and I'm happy, right? And, you know, I'm happy to talk about anything. I love being on stage, you know, all these sort of things. Um, you know, I'm that pain in the ass. Whereas, you know, James is a more considered and thoughtful sort of approach, maybe even a bit quieter. And I think the mistake we make is assuming that people don't need to hear both those takes. There's going to be people that resonate well with mine, but there's equally going to be just as many, if not more, that resonate with James's. Um, and it's a mistake to think that, look, people just aren't going to want to hear from me. I just think that's a mistake. Um, each of us has our own take, our own unique lived experience um, that we can share. Um, and of course, you know, our insights as it comes to finance. So, you know, I think we sort of get, get over ourselves a little bit. Um, and and own it, own what you're about, why you think it, um, why you think you can really help people and start talking to them. Uh, so I'd really encourage you to, to sort of get out there a little bit. Um, and if you're worried that nobody's going to like or look or follow, then you know what? I will. So if you're concerned, you're not going to have a follower on any of these platforms, reach out to me and I will be one of them. Um, I promise right here and now you've all heard it. Uh, so you can all keep me accountable. So now, as you know, I, you know, often get asked what it takes to become a real bionic advisor, you know, that, that advisor that's got the right tech for their practice and it's just keeping it hummy, humming. And, and the answer is simple. It's just about curiosity. And that's the one thing that I have in spades that I know adds real value to our practice. So to get your curiosity muscles working, as you know, each week we have our Curiosity Corner app that I share that I just want you to have a little looky-loo and check it out and, and see what you think. Now, this week's Curiosity Corner app is called Llama Life. You heard me right, folks. The Animal Llama, L-L-A-M-A, the app is Llama Life. You can find it at llamalife.co, that's double L-L-A-M-A-L-I-F-E.co. And their tagline is, say goodbye to never-ending lists and hello to daily bliss. And what I love is next to that is an image of this cute cartoony llama and it says, time to focus, no prob llama. <laughs> And it's like, it's dorky as all get out. And as you can tell, really appeals to my sense of humor. How can you not want to check out that app? Right. I mean, for me, like the minute I saw it, I'm like, yes, I want to, I want to know more. So this is sort of for those of us that, you know, really find ourselves waking up to, you know, really long list of to do's, things that have been nagging at you for weeks that you need to get done. Um, you might start on your list and then you end up abandoning it abandoning it to sort of check out more important stuff um, that you get distracted by. And the list you of to-dos just keeps getting longer and longer and longer, and it becomes so overwhelming that you can't even look at it. Like it's just, it's quite distressing in that sense. And, you know, you feel like you never start on anything, and so you sort of go to bed every night with this monster list, and it's just sort of towering over you, right, day in, day out, um, and is quite demoralizing in that sense. What Llama Life does is it turns your tasks into manageable bite-sized chunks, right? So it's just trying to get you to focus 
on one task at a time. It sort of celebrates with you when you cross off a task and it honestly looks like lots of fun. Like it really is designed to be a bit cheeky, a bit silly um, and a bit fun. But what's interesting to me is as I dug further and I looked at a lot of the reviews and comments about the app, that the popularity has come about because people who have ADHD or ADD have found it immeasurably valuable. Um, It has really helped them break through, give them extra focus on just what they need to do today, right? And, And just ticks and things off the list. So um, to me, that says a lot. If if people who, you know, can struggle with that focus um, um, by definition of a condition they have, this is this app really resonates with them, then I think, you know, lots of us could probably get some benefit from that. So uh, go and check it out, folks. Uh, let me know how you go. Um, and I myself will be playing with it and uh, seeing what comes of it, seeing if I can knock off a few things uh, off my list uh, and feel that little bit more productive in the day. Welp, that's all what all we've got for you this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And of course, you'll get to hear from James each Thursday. So, you know, double trouble there. Um, and if you are keen to hold, you know, a team building event um, for your financial advice practice or broader, or maybe in your dealer group that really sort of ignites their curiosity, then I would love to run and awaken the misfit within workshop for your team. Um, you know, we get them out of survival mode. We sort of move beyond just adulting and, and sticking the hamster wheel and we move them right into to adventuring in life. Um, I love the conversations and the connections created when we do these workshops. Uh, They're truly incredible to watch people light up and and get to know their peers better and get to to get to understand what they're all about and what they want out of life. Um, And, you know, the team build their curiosity muscle and learn a skill actually in curiosity that they can then apply in the practice for future innovation efforts. So it's sort of got benefits personally, but also starts to build that imagination capital for your practice. If this is of interest, then please reach out to me on LinkedIn uh, forward slash Peter and D. That's P E I T A N D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious. (laughs) 